what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an abbreviated uh, in class exercise that we did to record for this video lesson. So that way, if you can need a, a little bit of a refresher, um, here's the basics. Find the rate of change. We know that it's K. We're going to then use um, the rate of change, K, um, to build a nice equation so we can use to solve a lot of different problems. The basic setup is y equals kx, and if you know uh, what number represents k, you just pop that k out and put the number in that, that stands for k, the rate of change. And uh, then from there, um, it, it goes into a, a few little nuances, but we'll give you enough examples that uh, you'll be okay. So let's take a look at number one. It says, hey, find the rate of change for this relationship. I, I threw this in more as a review, um, just to make sure that you remember how to find the rate of change from a graph. We're looking for those nice points on the graph where you can find the y and the x. So like right here, that's a good point. This is a good point. That's a good point. And even right here, it's a good point. And a good point is where you can get the y value. So in this case, the 6. And the x value without having to guess on those. And how do we find k? Well, it's y divided by x. So k is simply 6 divided by 1 because this was my y value and this is my x value, and so k equals 6. The next thing is, is, hey, what's the equation? So we know that the basic equation is y equals kx, and we just found out that, hey, the k is the same thing as 6, right? What's the rate of change? That's the same thing as k. So since I know it's 6, I'm going to take this k out and put 6 right in spot. So y would equal 6x, and you'll see it waiting for us right here at C. Now, when we come over here to this next part, we're assuming that it's very easy for you to make this equation, and from what I've seen, at least last week, you guys felt fantastic about it. We might have to get a little bit of practice, but we know how to make the equation. Right now, I'm more concerned with you knowing what in the world this equation does. And what you do is, is you, you go, well, this is y, and you come over here and you find the y-axis. This y-axis is all these numbers. These are numbers. So this is 2 hours of sleep. At this point right here, it's 6 hours of sleep. At this one, it's 12 hours of sleep. So this y would represent the hours of sleep. Now, the x over here, we go find the x-axis. Here's the x-axis. This would be 1 day. Right here would be 3 days. And you get the idea. And that's where it's coming from. So we know that this x represents the number of days. So once we know what the y and the x stand for in this equation, it's not too bad when we say, hey, how many hours of sleep would this person get in 27 days? Well, since they gave us 27 days, I can rewrite this whole equation. But instead of x, I just pop in the 27 because it's 27 days. And now 6 times 27, we just pull the calculator up. And it'd be 162. So A. Um, when we get to number four here, it's, it's basically asking us how many in 13 days. So let's go set this up again. It was still y equals 6x. y is the number of hours. And x is the number of days. So this would stand for, for days right there. y would equal six times the number of days, in this case, 13 days. be 78. And again, it would be hours, because that's what we're looking for. Now, um, at this point, we're trying to see if you understand what the equation is. It shouldn't be too difficult. I mean, y equals 6x. We've already been over it like two times that y equals the number of hours. So this equals hours. We've also been over the fact that x would represent the number of days. Okay, 
well, you take what they give you. They said, hey, how many days would it take to get this many hours of sleep? Well, this is 774 hours. So that's what I'm going to replace. I'm going to replace the Y. And now that lets me divide the 6 on the other side to solve for X. So literally, I just pull up the calculator and I say, hey, 774 divided by 6. And we get 129. Now, 129 what? Well, since we solved for X, I know it's 129 days. Um, let's skip through to a, a different one just so we can see it. Here we go. Uh, we could put this on a graph. Like, see this point right here? Um, it would be 140, you know, that comes across there, and this would be 1. And this would be 2, and this would be 280. So we can put this all on a, a graph. I meant that to be a Y there. But they gave it to us in a table format. <laughs> Cannot write very well today. Okay, and this would be the x-axis over here. But we, we don't need all of this graph. I just wanted to show that to you. Now, um, basically find the rate of change. Well, you take your y value and you divide it by your x value. So 140 divided by 1 is 140. This is just meant to mess with people in case they accidentally put the 1 on top. Now, since we know the rate of change, we can build an equation. So y would equal 140x. And it's waiting for you right here. How many calories are in a can of soda? Or in eight cans of soda? Well, let's put the equation right here and let's find out what X stands for. X stands for the number of cans. So right here is the number of cans. And Y, with respect to the table, that would be calories. So since they gave us eight cans of soda, we're going to put it under here for x. y equals 140 times 8. One thousand one hundred and twenty calories. Same thing right here. Y equals 140x. X is cans. Y is calories. So I'll just put cows there. Uh, they want to know how many calories in 10 and a half cans of soda. So we just take out this 10 and a half and replace it for x cans. And since they're sitting side by side, we'll just go ahead and multiply them. One thousand four hundred and seventy calories. Seventeen. Um, hey, same thing, even if it's got a decimal that's less than one. Cans is by X, so one forty times zero point three. Basically, you're trying to find 30% of it. That's that's what 0.3 would represent. Oops, I didn't type it in right. 140 times 0.3 be 42. So, 42 calories. Um, the last ones right here is where instead of replacing the x, we're going to replace the y. Again, the X is number of cans, and Y is the number of calories. And they're saying how many cans to get 1,750 calories. So that Y is replaced by the 1,750 calories, because that's what Y re represents. And when we have this scenario where you know one number equals another number times a variable, you can get that variable all by itself by just dividing like this. You know, whatever number's here, just slide it to the other side. So 
1750 divided by 140. There you go, 12 and a half. So X would equal 12.5 calories, or you could write it out like this, 12.5 equals X, whichever one you like better. Um, the main idea of this lesson is not to, to take something hard and, and make it harder. The idea is, hey, even though you can solve some of these easy questions in a, uh, a different manner, I'm trying to get you to see what we can do with this equation and how it can help out with a little bit of uh, more difficult um, problems on there. If you can just take the time to learn what the Y and the X represents, and you can get that from the table, you can get it from uh, the graph, like uh, went back here to this one, like y and then the equation would represent the number of miles ran, and x would represent the number of hours. Okay, if we went back um, here, <laughs> like we did originally, y was the number of hours slept and x was the number of days, but you just refer back to what they give you, whether it's the graph or the table, and then once you know what the y and x represents in the equation. Um, what you do from, from there is you figure out what they've given you. Like in this case, number 327 is days, and x was days. So we took that x out and we replaced it with the 27 days. So we could figure out, hey, how many hours of sleep would you get? In this case, 162 hours.